So it's the middle of August, it's Monday morning, and we are just about at peak production for the farm. So I thought it'd be cool to do a video where I take you along for the ride for the whole week of what a week at full production looks like for a farm like ours. And we should be doing about $4,000 in production this week, give or take a few things. Um, that number fluctuates every week. It depends on basically what we harvest. Um, and the actual sales are going to be different than that number, but that's $4,000 in value produced. So we will earn that $4,000 in some way, shape or form throughout the next couple weeks. So it's Monday morning, it's roots day. So we're going to start with carrots and then Tomorrow is our salad greens day, which is Tuesday. Wednesday, we harvest for our veggie box, um, which is our weekly vegetable um, share that people come to pick up at the farm. Thursday is sort of a random day, whatever I need to do to top off for Saturday or um, certain farm tasks that need to be done, things like weeding, planting, um, it's sort of a free day. I just kind of use it to fill in for whatever needs to be done. And lately there's been so little to be done. It's kind of like, I almost take it off. I took last Thursday off actually. And then Friday, we typically do a top off harvest for the market that we do on Saturday, um, which is up in Billings, Montana. And we travel about an hour and a half to, uh, reach that market and sell the bulk of the production from the farm. So I'm going to take you through the whole week and you'll get to see what it's like um, to work on a farm like this or see how a farm like this operates. So I hope this is interesting for you and let's get to it. So every day I start by turning lights on, filling the soak tanks, and getting ready for whatever we're gonna be harvesting that day. Today is roots day. Mondays are always roots day for us, so we harvest our carrots and beets, green onions, radishes, stuff like that. Uh, but I also start by moving the plants that need to be hardened off that will be planted in the field. Um, so I start by doing my nursery stuff where I'm watering all the seedlings you see here and then I'll move the, the plants that I decide to harden off um, uh, after I'm done watering. So I, I make a decision which plants are going to be planted in the field and the hardening off process is necessary because otherwise um, they will fry in the sun. So we got to have them slowly acclimate to real sun because the greenhouse actually has a lot of shade um, and these are cilantro and dill plants which we plant almost every single week and if we don't harden them off they just get fried in the sun so this is a little glimpse of all of the plants that we have most of this stuff is for winter um, and then there's a lot of pea shoots and sunflower shoots here which we're selling a lot of at the market a lot of those are going to be harvested on tuesday and then i do my field walk every day in theory, but sometimes I don't get to it. But that's what this is. I'm walking around um, looking at the crops and seeing which ones are ready to harvest. This was a really tough week because it was cold, so nothing really grew. Um, but this is what the field looks like right now, and it looks great. But to my eye, I could tell most of the stuff's still not ready to harvest, so I was kind of frustrated this week. Um, everything here is like, you know, 80, 90% ready to go but that's okay um and uh you know it looks really good overall everything has been growing really really well this season um these are our onions those are not going to be harvested for probably another month from this video and these are the two carrots beds we're going to harvest today now i'm moving on to the carrot harvest itself which um, pretty much do every week and we're harvesting two beds here so this is going to be a truckload it's going to be over 300 bunches 
Um, each bed gets about 150 bunches, but it would have to fork it first because we have very heavy clay soil. So that's what I'm doing here. And then you pull them up in handfuls at this point and basically carry as many as you can in one hand and then twist tie them into bunches, which is what you'll see me do here. Um, the bunch size changes all the time. This is peak season, so I'm making the bunches pretty big. They're probably all about a pound of carrots in each bunch. And um, because it's pretty competitive right now, everybody has carrots. And that's the only thing at this market that I pretty much have that everybody else has. And here's a little close-up of uh, the actual bunching. And we use these twist ties that uh, make it a little easier for people i used to use rubber bands and i'd go around the greens but um employees have a much harder time with that so the twist ties are handy for that but uh yeah this is a big job this takes a lot of time to do so um i can harvest about 90 bunches an hour but it's not real fun to work that fast so it's nice to we really only need to harvest about 60 bunches an hour or something and um, the way we do it works pretty well because they're all growing evenly but after they're done harvesting you throw them in the soak tank like this and then put them on the wash table after they soak for about a half an hour and then we wash them with that big blue gun to get all the dirt off and just kind of wash every single bunch and then you flip them two by two and wash the other side and it works pretty fast so we can get a whole bunch washed and ready to go in the cooler quickly so time is money on a farm and then the other part of this is, of making money on a farm is planting so as soon as that bed's harvested we went ahead and planted it right away so what you see me doing here is amending with alfalfa meal and then we are planting with cilantro and dill that we've had hardened off for the week before this and uh, so I'm using the paper pot transplanter here I'm really liking that um, there has been a lot of learning to figure out how to use it in my soil because my soil is really concrete clay um, but once I got the hang of it it's been working pretty well and I'm hoping to just keep getting my soil to be better but that's just kind of my problem. I've got to get that figured out. I've been adding sand to my soil every year to try and make it better, but it doesn't always work. Um, and organic matter is what I really need anyway, not, um, you know, sand. But sand doesn't break down. So then the next thing I'm planting here is spinach uh, with the Jang push seeder. So I'm trying to get a couple of fall beds of spinach for the outside and it's raining but in wyoming rain is basically a couple of drops it's not really rain and it's still sunny so it's like never really stop working when it rains but this jang cedar is the best tool on the farm it's the first tool i bought basically back in 2019 it's like 600 dollars, but it has probably made about fifty thousand dollars the amount of stuff we've grown with that thing is just incredible it plants spinach arugula carrots perfectly every time and then obviously once you're done planting we got to turn the sprinklers on to water it in and this is a pretty regular routine lately we've been doing that on mondays and that makes the farm really profitable to just harvest and plant harvest and plant then here what you see me doing is pulling up bindweed in our winter carrot beds, which is an absolute nightmare. The bindweed has just been a disaster. The whole farm has little patches of it, and I just can't seem to get rid of it. But I'm just going to keep trying to pull it, and then hopefully it'll die eventually is the goal. But it's brutal. Um, that's why you see me frustrated there. But we ended up getting it all out. I had a lot. My employees helped me, and so that's why this looks so good, and I'm hoping... It won't grow back at least for a month, but we'll see. But these beds of winter carrots are perfectly germinated. That's why I was so frustrated. But, yeah, the whole time the water was running and we're watering in those plantings. And we usually water the field for about two hours uh, with the sprinklers. And that leaves a really nice inch deep watering. Um, then 
Tuesday is the next day, and that's when we do our greens harvest. That's a really big harvest day for us. We do our greens, and then we pack for all the restaurants and harvest tomatoes and cucumbers. We harvest cucumbers every day, actually, but it's a big day. It's the biggest harvest day of the week um, in terms of actual dollars. So this is me harvesting arugula with the Quick Cut Greens Harvester. And uh, we throw it in the soak tank, bubble it, with these um, jacuzzi pump to get all the dirt off and then we do the same thing with lettuce which you'll see me do here in a minute and basically the whole day we are harvesting all of the salad greens for the farm and bubbling it spinning it and then bagging it for the market and for restaurants we do different packaging for each one of those but uh, this is a huge part of the business this is where a lot of the money is made right here and we sell a lot more of this because of the tomatoes that we have and stuff that draws people to the booth. But it makes a really nice salad mix. But the tomato harvesting and sorting takes a lot of time. Honestly, it takes more time than the greens. Uh, we have to harvest them blushing so they're not fully ripe on the vine. Because if they're fully ripe on the vine, they just turn into jello and then we can't really do much with them. So we ripen them inside our building and that's what you see me doing here is I'm picking the right the right ripeness for the restaurants um, those are heirloom tomatoes that we've got and then after I'm done sorting I start to pick and we're picking between 150 to 250 pounds a week depending on I mean it just depends a lot because we have a second crop coming in uh, right around this time and once that comes in it's almost 300 pounds a week so um but yeah i'm picking the blushing ones right now and um it takes a lot of practice okay. to get good at spotting them and the heirlooms ripen really fast um it's hard to catch them early but they ripen really fast on the vine so that's why there's a lot more color on those but the beef steaks don't ripen quite that fast so i try to get them with a lot less color on them than that but it's hard to control. You really have no control on how fast they ripen. The weather has more control. And then I'm picking cherries here, and this is a pretty big job. They've been absolutely exploding lately. This is a grafted cherry tomato. Um, Sakura is the variety, and it's just been absolutely pumping. We have each one of those fruiting spurs is like two feet long. So we're getting almost as many cherry tomatoes per pound, pound wise, pound for pound as um, beef steaks, which is in, I've never had that kind of yield before. It's just been off the charts. So that's really positive. And then here, this is me picking the uh, second crop of tomatoes, which we have some Roma types that are um, absolutely beautiful. Best crop I've ever had of this. And they're just starting to come on here. But by the time I'm recording, we've, been doubling the amount um, every week then here what you see me doing is packing for the restaurants um, whatever they order I put into cardboard boxes label with their initials and then that gets delivered on Wednesday um, and so it's a pretty busy day because we're harvesting a whole lot for the rest of the week and then also for restaurants um, but that way it's really efficient and everything gets done in one day then the next thing I'm doing here is on Wednesday, which is our veggie box day. And this is me harvesting broccoli and then cauliflower. And this is one of the things that was driving me crazy this week because I knew it was like 95% ready, but it was barely enough. It really wasn't even close to enough to do our veggie box, which we have 55 people picking up this day. And we only got like 18 pounds out of this bed. And I was hoping for like 80 pounds at once, but what are you going to do? Um, but, and literally as I'm recording this, the yields have just tripled. There's almost 40, 50 pounds ready that I'm going to pick now. So that's just how it is with farming. You really can't control the time of things being ready as much as you think you can. And then I'm harvesting green onions here. Uh, normally I would do this on Monday, but they were barely ready. So I'm just harvesting the absolute bare minimum here for the veggie box. And, uh... I'm pretty good at selecting so we don't harvest too much because otherwise it impacts next week's sales. Um, that's another thing that you just take take some experience to be able to look at a bed and tell you tell be able to tell how much is there. 
And so I knew that there was plenty here to make it work, and we were really short on everything else, so it was hard to make the, the veggie box work this week. But um, this helped. Uh, green onions are a really good crop because they always yield a lot, um, and they're delicious. Um, so this is sort of me sorting the, the biggest ones because I don't like to harvest much smaller than pencil size um, and these were barely ready here so I was just being real careful and trying to grab the biggest ones um, and that also gives the other ones space to grow a little bit faster it's kind of what's called thin harvesting and I don't like to do it because it's really inefficient but it does work in a pinch then here's the actual veggie box display and this is what happens is people pick one vegetable in every one of those baskets and then and that's that. And then we move on to Thursday, or I'm sorry, this is Friday, where uh, it's our last big harvest of the week. Um, I've been taking Thursdays off lately just because we're getting everything done so fast. And so I picked cucumbers, which we still do technically every day. And this has uh, been a really old batch of cucumbers, but still doing really well. Um, and then I'm doing some kale. Um, we're really low on vegetables this week to bring to the market because of the veggie box and still everything was just not quite ready, but, um, it doesn't matter. The kale is still really profitable. So I harvested like 60 bunches to bring to the market, which I knew was pushing it, but, um, it's possible to sell that much if you're lucky. And if, if I don't, I can always sell it the next week because this we're harvesting on Friday. I just, if I, whatever I don't sell, I take home, put it in the cold room and it's good for at least another week. So there's really no risk uh, when you have a cold room like we do. Um, the only risk is salad greens, and I'm not even real worried about that anymore because the lettuce is still lasting 7 to 10 days, so it's really, really good. Um, and then uh, in the afternoon on Friday, once we're done harvesting, I start to load up the truck, which is a pretty big job. Um, I've got to make sure all of the market gear is in the truck. So that's me bringing in scales. We have to bring a garbage can to this market. Um, and that's a, um, takes up a lot of space, but it's necessary. And then all of the display stuff has to go in. So all the wooden crates and boxes and stuff have to go in and that takes up a lot of space. Um, it's been a challenge to figure out how to fit a large amount of produce in the truck um, but it's always doable you just have to figure it out it, but it's kind of like playing Tetris you got to figure out how to fit the maximum amount of stuff and display stuff at the same time and the display stuff is kind of necessary because this is a very competitive market and I want to stand out so and it's been working like a charm people love the look of my booth of our booth um, and everybody says we're like the best booth at the market because of all that stuff. So I'm, I'm willing to do all that display stuff because it matters. And ultimately, you could charge more, too. Um, it just looks gorgeous, which you'll see in the next part. But this is me putting the uh, canvas tarp in there. And that's to cover everything because I don't have a lid on this truck. Um, so what we'll do is we'll load up all of the totes in the morning. And then I'll cover it with that canvas so nothing blows away when we're driving because it is an hour and a half trip to the market in the morning. And this all has to be done now because I'm leaving at 4.30 in the morning um, or 4.45 to get to the market at 6.30 a.m. So this all has to be done ahead of time and I have to have a checklist where I double check everything's there. But we got to make sure the tents, the tables, weights, display stuff scales bags all that kind of stuff is in the truck ahead of time so um there was really no margin for error here you just have to have it all ready to go and uh but you know once you do it a few times it's no big deal and that includes having all the tomatoes pre-sorted that takes a while to make sure you get only the ripest ones um and that's about 120 pounds there 140 pounds um we're almost double that now but uh, I also have to make sure that all of the vegetables are in a really organized place so I don't have to screw around with it in the morning and just grab the hand truck and wheel them out because there's a lot of different stuff going on in the cold room and we got to have it all in one place for the market so we don't take the wrong stuff. 
So it's important to have every tote labeled like that too with this truck marker so we know what's in there and what date it was harvested and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's what I'm doing here is double checking uh, what's in there. Um, and then I finish off the day, uh, lately I've been planting our pea shoots which and uh, sunflower shoots which have been a really good crop. Um, I didn't expect them to sell this well in the summer, but they have been, so they're very profitable crops, so it's definitely worth the effort, and this takes very little time. It takes me like 20 minutes to plant this many flats. It's really fast. Um, so I just basically have them soaking the night before, and then you plant them, and there's there's a whole process there that I'm not going to go into, but um, it's, uh, it's all worth it's all how the farm makes money is planting and harvesting those are how the farm makes money so that's most of what we do and a little bit of cultivating and stuff like that and um so and you got to water them in because the potting soil is not always perfectly moist so you got to water them in before you're done and then once that's done, you put them in the greenhouse. Then last thing is to close all the greenhouse doors, make sure no deer can get in there, and then close the deer fence itself. And then we are uh, ready to relax until uh, tomorrow morning when we get up at 4 a.m. So I get up at 4 a.m. on Saturday and uh, start to pack up the truck and kind of just get the actual vegetables in there. And the reason we do all this is because if you did the vegetables the night before, they would be warm. When you leave them in the cold room, they stay cold the entire day and they don't deteriorate at all. So because there's so much volume of vegetables in those totes, they don't, they don't warm up throughout the day, no matter how hot it is. I've tested this and it was like 97 degrees when I got back. Lettuce was still cold and that's because we kept it in the cold room. So it's a really good way to reduce the amount of stuff that goes bad. Um, and then you see me here loading up the tomatoes in the back. I'm still experimenting with all sorts of different ways to load the truck to figure out the best way. And I don't know if I figured it out yet. I think I like putting most of the totes in the bed uh, because we could stack them up two to three high. And that makes a lot of, there's a lot of room that way. And then you got to cover it with the canvas here, which is kind of stressful because I've had this thing fly off before. Uh, but I got all these bungee cords that we strap around the canvas to make sure it doesn't flap. And then it is pretty secure. I haven't had any problems with it since. And then I'll use ratchet straps when we start to stack it another tote high. Um, but this keeps everything secure and not from blowing away. Then it's about 6.30 a.m. here and I'm at the market in Billings. And um, it's time to set up the tents and uh, this is where I really have to hustle it's time is money here big time so you really have to work really really fast because if you're not set up by the time market starts you're in trouble you're gonna be you're just never gonna have time to set up if it's 805 and you're still setting up you're in trouble the market starts at 8 so I gotta really move fast here um, so you'll see me working really fast getting the tables out and set up um, and there's a whole science to this. We have an L shape right now, and eventually we'll have a U shape where we have the draw crops, which right now is basically tomatoes, because I'm the only one there with a lot of tomatoes, and that makes a huge draw. And uh, so people will start with the tomatoes right there on that table, and then I'll have checkout at the absolute other end of my booth, so people have to walk past everything else to pay for those tomatoes, because people will always buy tomatoes but they're not always going to buy kale lettuce all the other stuff which is what really makes the farm money so um that's my strategy and it's been working beautifully um and the other part of it is putting all these tablecloths down beige tablecloths makes the vegetables pop look really really good and then um that's part of the whole skeleton um and nobody else does this stuff at the market, so that's how you stand out and do really well. Um, when you do all the stuff that nobody else does, that's how you stand out. And since this is such a competitive market, it's necessary to do this. So this is me setting up the skeleton of all the baskets uh, and stuff, root boxes. 
and um, we have to lift them up because that's how people could see them from farther farther away. So that's why I got all those two by fours. That works really really well. And then in the baskets or in the boxes, I generally put roots, but sometimes kale because kale's really bulky. Um, but you got to set up the skeleton first, and then you can actually put the vegetables out because otherwise. If you put stuff out too early, it'll wilt before people get there, and that looks really bad. So the vegetables go out last. And the first vegetable I actually display is tomatoes. So um, I get all the cherry tomatoes pinted up. This takes forever. Um, it's the longest thing, but you have to do it there because you can't store the tomatoes. It takes way more space when you pint them up beforehand. So you have to do it this way. Um, I might try it, I don't know. But uh, it's the only way I've found to work, make it work. But then you set up the actual tomatoes, um, the regular beef steaks and stuff, and the heirlooms, and that's that's what draws everybody to the booth. And at this market, everybody walks in that direction, so they always see those. And they just zoom in, and they start forming a line, and that's how you start getting them to buy more stuff. And then we do the roots next, because that's kind of heavy. Um, you know, people are using a little shopping basket that I bought. So you want to put the tomatoes, well, it doesn't really matter, I guess, actually, because I'm going to bag it all up for them at the checkout, but this is just how we do it. So the roots are next, carrots, and then, um, you know, kale, chard, everything is kind of in its own little category. So people, it's like a grocery store, so people know what's what and where. Um, generally, that's how I do it. It depends on what's going on and what's coming off the farm. But right now, we're really long on the kale and chard. Um, so we're really putting it everywhere. Um, I won't do that every single market, but we have um, head lettuce next, which is actually pretty much the same lettuce as we use for salad mix, but it looks gorgeous, so people love it. And then, then the salad mix comes next. And I use two baskets because we have so much of it, and I want to make sure people see it and buy it. And then pea shoots next to that. Um, and then basically herbs and like dill, cilantro, parsley, and then... A little bit of summer squash and cucumbers we're really low on all that stuff this week so that's why it's mostly the kale and carrots we're long on carrots so it was a tough week actually to bring enough to market to make it worth it but then we're putting up bagged carrots which i sell as well um, sometimes people like those better and it makes a great end cap just like at the grocery store we have an end cap because as people are paying right there they usually will put one of those in their bag and it just makes more money these are the shopping baskets I was talking about, and that works really, really well, especially when people are carrying like 10 tomatoes. So they carry the tomatoes, and then uh, the shopping basket helps them carry other things, which basically, it just makes it easier for them to buy more stuff. And for me to count at the end, it really helps a lot. I found it to be a game changer. But this is the final display, and it's a light week for us. We're gonna have a lot more coming up here, but um, then uh, this is probably just a couple minutes before the actual bell comes off and the bell signals the start of the market when we can actually start selling. We can't sell before the bell. And then there's the bell right there and uh, I can go ahead and start selling which is of course tomatoes are the first thing people are buying and I weigh those and there's a, that's a price scale so it prices out which makes it go really, really fast. But you can see how fast I'm moving here. This is really important to go fast here because there's already a line of like 10 people there. Um, but uh, you don't want to go too fast because you want them to sit in line and look at everything too. Um, that helps. But uh, yeah, this is pretty much the gist of the market. And then, uh, then I just keep selling until the end. And this is the end and we just put everything away basically the same way uh, almost the same way as you put it in it's just in reverse and this was a really solid market given how little i had um, i sold almost all the green stuff except for kale um, so there's only six totes left and i came with about 19. so it wasn't the most profitable market but it was really really good because it was supposed to be slow and i didn't think it was slow at all but um, tomatoes and greens are the core of what makes money on the farm so I did really well with those so I was happy because nothing really is going to go to waste and we'll sell it elsewhere uh, whatever we don't sell we sell elsewhere so, um, so basically just pack up take all the tables down put them in the back and put the canvas back on and uh, 
it's a little harder sometimes because you never know how much volume is going to be there but and then I put the actual leftover food in the the cab because I have air conditioning and it'll keep it really cool on the way back um, but sometimes that's not even necessary depending on how hot it is but um, that's pretty much it and then just turn the truck on and go home so I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you in the next one